Welcome back, everybody, to the show. I am your host, as always, Jay Villain, a.k.a. That Villain Jay. And with me, my partner in podcast, as always, the numbest of skulls, Mr. Numbskull himself right here. What's up, guys? How are we doing? Well, let me turn my mic up a little bit. I was a little bit low in the mix. There we go. Now oh, okay. Hear me. All good. There we go. All right. So welcome, guys. We are hyped. I don't know about you. Where's your hype level at, Numbskull? Let's get a hype reading. Where's the hype here at? Yeah, I'm I'm pretty uh I'm I'm pretty excited, man. This is uh there's man, there's something for everybody here. Some uh, for everybody. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh definitely something for everybody and you got to be ready. And you got to be ready for anything. Um a lot going on. A lot to pay attention to. A lot. And a lot to look forward to. Yeah, and if you don't know, we are talking about Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Yes. It is coming. It is coming to Arena, uh, of course, Tuesday, the 16th of April. Okay, so mark your calendars. That is when it's happening, Tuesday, the 16th of April. That is when it is hitting Arena. Um, As far as hitting store shelves, I think it's going to be that Friday or Thursday night. So if you're yeah. a paper player, it's going to be that weekend. Um, and there, as we know, uh, there is going to be an early access event that we were not invited to. Yay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, there was an early access event for all your other streamers who aren't us. Fortunately, for whatever reason, we didn't get in this time. Um, and uh, that is going to be what day is that going to be? That is going to be 10th. That's a week from 10th. Um, Week from yeah. the day that we're recording this. Week from the day of recording. We would have loved to be there with you. Unfortunately, we're not, um, which is a shame, but it is happening. So you are going to get to see some of these cards uh, in action. Um, and as as some of the patrons of the Discord have seen, Jay and I are going to release decks for you guys in the patrons only Discord. We'll probably throw in the Patreon too because we know that not all of our yeah. patrons have uh discord mm -hmm. but the decks that we make now that we know of all the cards that are out which jay and i are going to be you know getting to that th throughout the next week um we'll be putting them in the patron only discord and it, uh on patreon it'll be another added bonus jay and i just don't want to be like releasing content out into the wind yeah if, if, for if, people if, to grab perhaps for, for someone to you know be looking at our our list somebody people have jay's aether hub saved whatever yeah and they're gonna, you know, grab that and use it for content on uh, early access. Normally, we don't have a problem with it, um, just as long as we're included in that event too. But <laughs> exactly, <laughs> we're not I'm, included in the event, so we're not gonna give anybody anything yeah. for free. And because I'll probably do them. my my early my theory as I do. I usually do one or two theory crafting builds, um, maybe the day a day or two before the deck comes uh, the set comes out. Oh so yeah, like after early weekend. access, we'll, yeah, we'll after probably early be access. Stuff. We're going to be dropping stuff, so it's not going to yeah. be all gone. But, yeah, uh, yeah. so if you want to become a patron, you're going to get access to some of our early deck builds. Eventually, they'll be out there. Obviously, we're going to make them eventually. But if you want that early access yep. to our deck builds, and if you just want early access to our uh, videos, mm -hmm. uh, we'd love nothing more than to um, early access you to the videos themselves. <laughs> um, that would be great, too. Um, guess what you can do? You can join our Patreon right you can join our patreon and we actually are going to read out our patron members here today because they're the ones supporting us uh they're the ones that uh, get the early access to these videos they get access to the discord they get a bunch of other cool stuff they get a say and votes and how we do and uh it's a council we like to hear from you and we like to get the, the community involved so we will say thank you to our patrons right now which is of course metal mechanic eclipse notorious d dead fast frank e argent icon Wyler Taylor, uh, The Clash, a live action RSPG, Lars Van Bream, Great Xylo Beast, um, J. Jamel Zilla, um, Trexodactyl, Lord Gypticus, The Flipticus, Mamulian, Cassius, Nickel Nuts, H Man, Ulfir, Dante Valentine, Cleverest of Sounds, and of course, a pair of Dabos. Not even just one Dabo, but a whole pair of them right there for your pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Yes, thank you guys so much. 
And uh, don't forget that you can join the, the uh, you know, become a patron as little as a dollar a month or a dollar an episode, whatever you prefer. Um, mm-hmm. we, we like to keep it accessible to you guys, but we also say that anybody who supports us, even if it's as little as possible, uh, we want to give you a lot of free shit and a lot of cool shit. So, uh, you know, think about it. See if you want to do it. If not, um, we're still thankful that you're watching. So we're happy to be here again. And we have um, we were talking about the Thunder Junction, you know, our hype for it. Uh, today, we're going to be dropping the council top 10. Oh, yes. That is the, what you've asked for here. That's what you're I know. That's what you guys are here for. That's what you're here top, for. Yeah. That's what the title is going to say. Um mm-hmm. That's what the timestamp's going to be for whenever we're done bantering. We when we eventually get into it. When we eventually get into it, you know we like to be long winded here. This is long form podcast, so don't worry if you are waiting. Um, if you are waiting, that you will absolutely get. All you have to do is timestamp it. Yep, uh, and you'll be fine. You'll <laughs> make we, it. But we will be uh, we'll be doing a, a top five for from Eat Jay and myself. That's a top ten, and then um, we will also be doing. I think Jay and I each have a couple honorable mentions because I'll be honest. I sent Jay about 14 cards that I thought were good. And by good, I mean like, you know, going to be very relevant. Um, and I, and some of them we overlapped on after I sent him the, the second yeah. round. So basically how we do but... this is we get all of our favorite cards. We do them separately. We don't even say mm-hmm. anything to each other. Although we did agree on the uh, on the card zero, it was it was unanimous. Card it was unanimous. As soon as we saw that, we're like card zero, card zero. Yeah, yeah. You, we're gonna have that. That is our double pick. That's the one that we both agree is probably the best new card coming out. Yeah. If you know what it is, leave a comment or say in the chat if you know what it is already. If you yeah, if, if you you're can watching, guess, if you're watching live, yeah, uh, <laughs> guess. And I'll, if, you know what? I'll even try to gift you if if somebody guesses it. I'll I'll, I'll maybe shoot you a gift or something. Yeah, anyways. yeah, yeah. We'll we'll shoot you we'll shoot you a little <laughs> gifted um hint hint if you pay attention to jay or myself at all anywhere you're gonna know (laughs) you're gonna know what it is uh what are what are tier zero cards (laughs) um so yeah so we so we pick our our big card pool we see who overlaps we see what doesn't overlap and then we say okay well i'm gonna take that one you're gonna take that one yeah um boom 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 Mm -hmm. uh it's gonna be great it's gonna be great so we're gonna do our top 10 um our uh, maybe one or two honorable mentions and then the tier zero card these are what we think are gonna shake up the game and Mm -hmm. kind of a little bit of both what's gonna shake up the game and what we're excited to play coming up in thunder junction and like we were saying we'll have some honorable mentions there were some that jay and i were like yeah we have you know jay said he had a short list in case where there were a lot of overlaps um and then just general cards that we, we may be worried about. Um, and I have a few to mention that are draftable that could be huge problems. Yeah. Um, so we'll we'll look into that too. Yeah. Um, and I know that sometimes in the sets we feel like sometimes we have like stuff that we complain about, but I feel like not a lot to complain about here. No, I, I really don't think there's only um, one card that I think is problematic that uh-huh. I'm not looking forward to. We'll get to that. But I think yeah. overall it's, it looks like some pretty fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and I, I do think there's some problems for drafting because of some of the the reprinted chase cards. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, um, I don't see too many things being a problem here. So I, I think we'll be okay. And, in that and we tried not to print, p- pick too many. I don't think we printed to picked any reprints because we've picked reprints no. before. And yeah. afterwards, we're like, eh, we shouldn't have picked a reprint. So it's all yeah. new stuff. Yeah. Um, there is so- a reprint that we, we were like, we, that we we both were considering choosing and we'll, yeah. we'll talk about it yeah um it's it's relevant and it's we, we everybody knows it's a good card so yeah but yeah all right you want to kick it off i did the sure, patron so I, i'll let you kick it off here we go with sure, the, yeah, uh, yeah with his number five what is your number five numb skull what are we talking here? does it let me binding negotiation my apologies anyway um it is a sorcery and we always try to pick a couple that are um you know not super expensive cards and some that'll take it easy on your wild cards if you're playing digitally so this one is a sorcery it's uh two mana a colorless and a black and it's an uncommon so not going to be too expensive although it is preemptively going for two dollars as a two dollar uncommon well that's fine 
um, it'll probably be good. And you heard Jay and I talk about the new mechanics of the set. And this one directly plays on uh, the mechanics themselves, or one of them at least. And I think that's why it's going to be relevant, because I think that mechanic particularly will be relevant. So to give you an idea, the card text here. Target opponent reveals their hand. You may choose a non-land card from it. If you do, they discard it. Um, so just stopping there, that is kind of like Pilfer. Mm-hmm. Um, which is like one mana extra thought sees mm-hmm. and, and don't lose life. But we get additional text here. Um, otherwise, you may put a face-up exiled card they own into their graveyard. And that and the face-up exiled card, usually in this instance, and the reason this was printed, was for cards that are plotted. It stops the plot mechanic stop the plot Mm -hmm. so i think this is going to be incredibly relevant hell of a sideboard card um you're playing best of three because someone's going to find a way to make plot really good and the one drawback to plot is you do have to show the opponent what it is yeah you basically have something kind of floating you pay the plot cost and it's just floating. It's suspended in kind of suspended animation outside, just waiting. Yeah. Uh, I think kind of outside the game, really, uh, yep. in exile. Yeah. And then at any time, you can play it for free as a sorcery. So, yeah. If you know somebody's plotted, this cancels the plot. Yeah. It cancels the plot. And, and the cool thing here is it's not like choose one. It's not like, oh, well, if I take the plotted card, I don't get to look at your hand. No, I get to look at your hand anyway and then decide. So you exactly. can't even bluff by plotting something. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think for two mana, this is great. Um, this is your power creep pilfer here. Um, yeah. People already use pilfer. It was already used in the sideboards when it came out. Not quite as much anymore just because duress is good and we have bat. Mm-hmm. Um, but this could like take the place of bat in some in some occasions. And because now you're able to interact with X. We got to th- we got to think know. ahead. We got to think ahead about three four months. Yeah, some of these counter, some of these discards that we have right now are going to be going. They're going to rotate. Yeah, they're going to rotate. Yeah. So thinking, so is, thinking ahead for yeah. your discard deck, your exile decks, some of this stuff's not going to be there anymore. So. And th- and this is nice for that because you're going to have a strong two mana discard anything spell that's going to stick around, and and I, I think that that immediately makes it relevant. Yeah, good one, good one. I think it's going to be. We're going to have to see how it goes. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's going to be a good one. Um, what do you speaking, got? So my first one, because I, I know something's going to happen with this, and I think you know what I'm going to be talking about here. Okay. Uh, something is crazy is going to happen. I, I'm not <laughs> that much of a technical brewer to even know how to begin breaking this, uh, but it's going to get broken, guys. Mm-hmm. We, we already know it's going to get broken, and that is none other than Oh. Becca splitter of seconds okay so what we're doing with obeka splitter of seconds is she is going to be a grixis remember when grixis was like really good yeah. um she is going to be grixis which is red black and blue and one so she's a four drop a little expensive she's mm-hmm. a menace ogre warlock She's a big old muscle mommy on the card art, which is you know, points in her favor. Um, <laughs> and whenever she deals combat damage to a player, you get an additional upkeep phase after this step. I have never seen in all of Magic, I don't know if there's a card that gives you an extra upkeep phase. I've never, if it exists, I've never heard of a card that gives you uh, after combat, you get, oh, well, you can just have another upkeep. And never this heard would of that be in my two life. upkeeps with her. Why, because why, because you it's get however it, much damage. Oh, yeah. deals count. You get that many additional mm-hmm. upkeep phases. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what a weird card. Um, <laughs> that, that That is some weird stuff right there. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, that is some crazy weird stuff. I, I, I'm excited about it. I, you know, it's it's going to be it's going to be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to whatever happens here um 
I, what can I think, we do on upkeeps like a shieldred? Yeah. I mean, we can gain life. We can do all kind of stuff. So there's all there's a million different upkeep effects. It's really just going to matter how we can pull what off here uh, when we do upkeep. We can give her double strike. We can do something like put yeah, a double four, strike on her and, and, <laughs> and, and do double damage and get 80 yeah. million upkeeps. Like it's such yeah. an abusable card. And um and, and I think what's what's relevant is after those upkeeps, you have another main phase. Yeah. So that's there's stuff to be said for that too. Um mm -hmm. and yeah, this card is just like right off the bat it's it's like it feels like it's a somewhat of a ticking time bomb and it's mm -hmm. definitely a little bit uh ubiquitous mm -hmm. and it, jay and i had to throw it in here just because like we we're like something somebody something's gonna, gonna something happen with, with this. this card and it's gonna be absolutely ridiculous and this could this card could actually scream emergency ban yeah and 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 maybe not in standard but in some format this could be like emergency ban. Oh, there's going to be infinite you know loops. I mean? There's going to be. Yeah, there's I mean, because if you jack her up her power, I mean, you, you could do you could potentially, you know, guys are going to figure out how to give themselves 15 upkeeps, 100 <laughs> upkeeps. And I, who knows what's going to happen at that point? So definitely. Well, just, and she's just Grixis, immediate. which I like. Yeah. You know, yeah. The Grixis so. is cool. You get access to a lot of stuff for a combo and she could be a commander, you know, Um uh, just immediately putting like security bypass on her mm -hmm. unblockable okay there you yeah. go if you can't remove her i'm getting more upkeeps and yeah you just figure out what happens in your upkeep that's good on certain cards and i think something else that is not looked at yet is like this might make other cards a lot better because it's like things have upkeep triggers that are just like okay sure whatever they might mm -hmm. not get played a lot but they might get played all of a sudden because of her exactly you know? so yeah. Oh, Becca, she's going to be doing it. She's an ogre, uh, ogre muscle mommy. Points in her favor for all of it. Great stuff. Love Good to see flavor it. text, too. Yeah, yeah. She's a, she's a cool <laughs> You're one. living on borrowed time. I exactly, because like like she does time stuff. You guys yeah. get it? She does time I, stuff, guys. I like that they, they didn't make her like only blue or like Azorius or something, too. Yeah, that, that, that's why I'm happy about it, too, because they made her Grixis. Because yeah. she is an ogre, so they didn't make it. I mean, this this <clears> screams of like Simic or Azorius and no, yeah, they made, her, they made her base. They made her awesome. Yeah, I respect it. <laughs> cool. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that that's a really fun one. And like I said, Jay and I just we we couldn't in good conscience not throw it in here because it's gonna do something crazy, mm -hmm. and, and we know it. All right, so here's one. Here's my number four. This one is Caustic Bronco. It's another two mana card. It's a colorless and a white. Again, it's a creature snake horse mount oh yeah so we're gonna bring at you another interesting mechanic about um snake horse mount snake horse mount <laughs> we're gonna bring you up another interesting mechanic that we think that we, we thought would be relevant to uh the the saddle mechanic if you don't know what any of these mechanics are watch our last podcast episode there's even timestamps for the particular one so you may only have to spend like a minute or two going back um, we explain each uh, mechanic, each of the new ones for you. So this one says it's a two-two. By the way, um, whenever Caustic Bronco attacks, reveal the top card of your library and put it into your hand. You lose life equal to that card's mana value if Caustic Bronco isn't saddled. Otherwise, each opponent loses that much life. There so, we go. Not only good in Commander good in any format because it's each opponent you're not targeting anyone so they can't get around it by giving themselves hexproof which there are cards that do that um the saddle is three so you could play like turn two this turn three braids turn three um underdog turn three you could play in a lot of different kinds of decks. You could do like a turn three, that that green creature that has vigilance, that three, four. I can't remember the name right now. Um, you know, um, graveyard trespasser, whatever, because you can saddle with it the turn that it comes out. You know, absolutely. Yeah. And this is the attack trigger. So if it gets to attack, the thing happens. You have like a breach the multiverse. All right. Boom. Seven life on turn three. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. you do it the next turn and you happen to have a blood letter out that turn also. All right. Well, it's a breach 14 life. You know, it's like this could this could do some damage and you have to do like I mean, you're like you're taking a chance on it. Like, obviously, if you hit a land, it kind of sucks. 
But at the same time, you can just you're going to put it in your hand either way and you're not drawing a card. Don't forget, you're putting it in your hand. So you're getting around shouldered triggers, too. Um, so I think this card was very thoughtful, well thought out. They are reward. There's there's a lot of things where it's like they're making sure that the new mechanics get used. Uh -huh. You know, they're gonna make you use plot. They're gonna make you use saddle, and they're they're gonna reward you for it. And this is evidence of that. Yeah, it, um, this is really brings me in flavors of what's that? Uh, what's that one that the Demir one that lets you cast the top spell off for free? And you lose, they lose life or whatever. I can't remember. What oh, um, Hidetsugu and, and, and yeah. Kairi. It's kind of in that flavor of, yeah, I know that one's mm -hmm. cast it, but if you're putting it, like you said, if you're stacking expensive stuff on top, mm -hmm. even if you do, and there's so much surveil in black, like you have, yeah. you know, there's a lot of surveil. There's scry. You have map you can, tokens now. You, you can throw that. Yeah. Map tokens are going to help. Mm -hmm. Um, You can set this up. You can yeah. put a big, you could put a big cost card and saddle up and just immediately um uh and just immediately crush them like it's and, it's not good it's it's gonna hurt and there's also that tutor that lets you put uh cards on top of your library oh yeah the um uh is, 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 timer. Is, what's the hell is it called is that the insatiable avarice or is that a different one oh, i thought you're talking about the one from eldraine no no, no 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 there's one coming out it's it's one of one of the the black spree cards it's a tutor that you put it right on top. Now there is Varagoth Blood Sky Sire. That's that. I think that might have been uh, was that uh, Caldime or Eldrain maybe. That that one does it as a creature. But there's a there's a sorcery that does this too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a tutor. I think it's Insatiable Adverse. I'll take a look. Um, let's see. Is that the one? Yep. Uh, one black and two. Search your library for a card. Shuffle and put that card on top. There you go. Put your you go. Uh, shadow of mortality up there. Put your shadow of mortality. Just put your breach, whatever, you know? Yeah. How much mana is that card? There you go. Seven. 15 mana. Shadow of mortality. It's a seven. seven. <laughs> 15 mana. Go ahead. Three, three mana. Put that on top. So Smile yeah. your creature. 15 life. There you go. Boom. But either way, I you're mean, welcome. even if you're using little <laughs> stuff, attacking with this guy every turn and forcing people to, you know, just gain life loss every turn. Yeah. Especially when you attack again, combine it with a uh, blood ladder of Aklazots and they lose yep. double. Yeah. You know? And, and, and it's one of those where it's like, it, it demands removal, you mm -hmm. know? Um, I, I get it. It's easy to kill it. It's a two, two cut down the cheapest of burn spells can kill it. Yeah. I get it, but you still you, have to play it. You make them use it yeah. and, and you're still getting the card or if they don't want you to get the card, they have to, show you that they have it they have to hold up mana during your turn uh -huh. they have to have that instant speed interaction it it, it forces people to play differently it's going to affect the game um and that that's why i feel like i have to say it's good yeah for sure for sure um okay good stuff so i i would that was another one that we agreed on that he took that one i, I didn't i didn't take it we, we negotiated <laughs> on that one that yeah. one was definitely you know anything that causes life loss we're gonna want we're all over it and I mean, I didn't choose only black cards, but most. I tried. I tried to get out of my wheelhouse because I remember it was it Eldrain that we basically only chose anything with black in it. Not Eldrain because we, we weren't doing this for. Oh, Wilds of Eldrain. Yeah, no, yeah, the Wilds. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, yeah, there, there's a couple where we're like, yeah, we're only interested in this. Yeah. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go next. Speaking of life loss in general. Um, we are going to be talking about next. I'm going to be telling you about Vile Smasher, who's actually a returning character who I was unaware of. That apparently he was in another, um, he was in another set, and I was completely uh, unaware of him. Vile Smasher, Gleeful Gren Grenader. Okay, that's uh, that's who we're talking about here. Why do I like him? Well, we're sticking oh, yeah. with the idea of new mechanics. <laughs> Yep. He is a Rakdos card, and he is straight Rakdos, meaning that he is one black, one red, uh, Goblin Mercenary. And whenever another outlaw you control, now an outlaw is going to be a, um, an outlaw is going to be a, anything that is an assassin, mercenary, pirate, rogue, and warlock are all outlaws. So he is an outlaw. 
But that is the batch. That's the new mechanic called batch, basically meaning that all of those cards are considered outlaw. So whenever you see a mechanic that says whenever an outlaw, it happens. Uh, Vile the Smasher deals one damage to target opponent. There it all is. Right. So what does that mean? That means any time that you put mercenaries, assassins, pirates, rogues, and we just got a bunch of pirates, if you remember. Mm -hmm. uh, anytime we do any of these things, and we are getting, yeah, and warlocks, he's going to ping. He's going to ping. And what does it mean when he pings? It means that it's one damage. I want to combine this with something like um, there's cards now. There's Mardu card that makes X amount of mercenaries. You can make X amount of mercenaries by form just playing posse. that. Yeah. yeah, form a posse. Yeah. So, okay, turn five. I play five. I deal five damage. Guess what? I'm running something like uh, Ojertaj. We had this with um, War Leader's Call. You know, you combine this with mm -hmm. War Leader's Call and Mardu as well. And every single time that you play a any one of these cards, he is going to uh, trigger. I mean, that's really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's a really good combo right there. And he's an um, uncommon. And, yeah, and he's an uncommon. Any time that we can ping when something comes in, combined with all the other methods that we have of pinging, um, uh, what's a Oger Axonil? That's the one. If you if a red source you have oh, would deal damage. Four damage. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. cool. Exactly. That's cool. It would do four damage. So we could do a Rakdos Oger Axonil with him and just start pinging. We could come. We can make it Mardu and combine with some other crap. Um, yeah. And and do it War Leader's Call. We could do a lot of terrible terrible things. Uh, and I think that that would be really fun. I think that that would be really fun and fun yeah. to do. Um, and if you're running Mardu, you can also uh, play the the Lunark veteran, and you can gain life every time they come in. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. You can yeah. turn it into like free extort. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You, you, you. I like anything that every time something happens, you ping. It's not once a turn. Ping, 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 every ping. Every time. Yeah. Each one. Yeah. You, you are, um, um, you are going to be, uh, you know combining this it's going to be good it's going to be good especially considering how much flexibility you're going to have yeah with all of these different creatures uh which are all mercenaries so rogue decks pirate decks yeah. any kind of deck he is going to be uh he's going to be living it up and i think they did a good job of like throwing mercenary rogue assassin mm -hmm. onto like the end of a lot of other um creature types Mm -hmm. like vein ripper vein ripper is a vampire assassin he's an assassin vein yeah. ripper is an outlaw think about that exactly so you know? we're getting a really good batching card with that one mm -hmm. um it's good stuff i like it um yeah i think that i think it's one to watch right there he's a little guy but i think he's got a lot of potential for combinations yeah and once again draws out the removal demands it mm-hmm um, so that's good for sure. For sure. Um, cool. Um, well, I guess we're on to my number three, which is, um, and I am going to, I am going to go to a different color here. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> I'm going to, uh, it's, it's, this is a red card. It's an instant. It's uh, two red. It's red, red. It's an uncommon and it's a spree card. Um, just remember with the spree cards, if you cast it for the regular cost, you have to be able to also uh, cast or, or pay one of the additional costs to cast. It. So uh, with the spree, the first option, which is for one colorless. Well, what's your card? Oh, I'm sorry. Return the favor. Did, did I not say there it? There we go. No, you did not. Oh, okay. It's return the favor. Um, Got too excited. I Yeah, I, I was getting a little excited. Yeah, I was jumping the gun. Um, so it's uh, the first spree is copy target instant spell, sorcery spell, activated ability, or triggered ability. You may choose new car targets for the copy. Um, just thinking about some things that happen here. Obviously, Vein Ripper triggers, Shouldered triggers. I believe you can't, you cannot hit uh, the a blood letter of aquazot's trigger that's like a replacement effect it's not a triggered ability yeah it's a static world ability yeah um i i hate to say it but double attracts the triggers for three extra mana look at the top <laughs> 20 cards put 10 cards in your hand yeah kind of ridiculous i don't know a little why a little bit nuts i feel like you probably don't need to do that because you're almost going to have a full hand probably anyway but technically you can do it 
Um, so, and then obviously you can copy instance and sorceries, which that's good too. Um, but the second one really piqued my interest here because we've had, we've had abilities like the first one. Um, we've had like, was it like lithoform engine that copies things like that? And that was kind of an expensive spell. This is a little cheaper and it's an instant, which is nice. But this one, the second uh, spree ability here, change the target of target spell or ability with a single target. And I think that that is just really Uno cool. reverse card. Yeah, the, the old Uno reverse. Um, you know, if you're, uh, they target, you know, the creature that they need to be removing. Oh, no, sorry. You're actually targeting this one one now. You know, <laughs> like just stuff like that, dude. I, I think I think it, it allows it allows you to have some really fun interactions, keeps people honest, you know, mm -hmm. um, which I like. Um, it puts like, fear into the game because um, yeah. they're not 100 percent sure whether or not red is ever holding that. Yeah, it, yeah, it gives. I don't know if we need to. I mean, I guess we needed to get, throw them on a red a bone here. So yeah, it gives them a little something. You know, I'm killing your your big red creature now. I'm just gonna kill your your one one phoenix chick now. You know, mm -hmm. so just stuff like that. Or you could you could actually change the target instead of killing um, one of their uh one like if a opponent tries to kill one of your creatures, you could change it to target one of theirs. So there's mm. a lot of like Jay said, like the Uno reverse card, um, that like kind of get out of jail card. You, the cop tries to arrest you, and you hand him the Uno reverse. That's sorry, what you gotta officer, do. You know, um, I'm sorry, it's a Uno reverse. Hey, I didn't make the rules. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so yeah, just I, I, I think it's gonna be fun. Um, I think it, it had to be mentioned because it is just, it's sick, dude. It is sick. I, I think it's cool, being able to, to change the target. I don't know if I've ever seen that personally there was a few oh, i think there's a couple of orler spells that let you cancel out or change the target there's trickery I, th okay. there's been similar effects yeah but i don't think anything this cheap because and again mm -hmm. you have to remember with spree i want to point out you can choose both if you just pay two red and two yeah you can get both you can copy yep. it and then reverse it yeah you can flip it down grab it flip it down reverse it like missy elliott <laughs> said um yeah it, that's not an issue you could um, play a counter spell, or no, you sorry, you could copy their counter spell, and then change the target of their counter spell to your counter spell. So then you resolve your spell. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. <laughs> Just something like that. I don't know. You know what I mean? That could be fun. I think that you're going to see some, it's going to cause the game to have very unique interactions that I don't think we've seen before. And it's going to be, if nothing else, it's going to be entertaining. Uh -huh. Like I'm, I'm probably going to end up laughing my ass off in a game from an opponent doing something crazy with this card. Uh -huh. And I'm going to just applaud them and, you know, I either beat yeah. them or I concede. Well, that's a spree one right there. And that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. And we have some more spree coming up. So don't worry. Um, we have a spree of spree coming. We have a spree of spree. Uh, <laughs> my uh, my number three, I think that you all were probably expecting it. Uh, that is going to be the lady herself who's back. She was going to rotate, but now she's not anymore. Um, Gisa the Hellraiser. Yes. Yes. She's, she's back. here. <laughs> we, we are getting just on the verge. We're going to have three glorious months where zombies are going to be OP as all get out. Um, because before rotation, before we lose those, uh, before we lose those lovely um, Crimson Vow and other, other cards from the uh, Innistrad set where zombies roll heavy, mm -hmm. uh, we're getting a little bit of zombie support from Geese of the Hellraiser. And she is going to be a zombie captain. She's honestly better than Glorious Resurrector, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, yeah. She is very solid right here. Um, two black and three legendary creature human warlock ward two pay two life skeletons and zombies you control get plus one plus one and have menace not only is she into zombies she's also into skeletons now we got a lot of skeletons coming up mm -hmm. and we have a lot of skeletons and stuff from uh believe it or not we had skeletons from ixalan right ixalan yeah we had yeah. some skeleton cards too uh and then we got even more we have crime committing right here whenever you commit a crime yeah. create two create a tapped 2-2 two, two, blue and black 
um zombie rogue so guess what guys yep. you could put her with uh you could put her with whatever his name is vile smasher yeah and he will ping every he'll be he'll ping twice because two rogues are coming into play uh this ability only triggers once each turn hey what were we just talking about with return the favor trigger it twice uh put four two yeah. two zombies on the board guess what they come in as two twos all zombies they're guess they're actually three three menaces you've all of a sudden you've committed a crime which of course a crime is whenever you target any opponent's permanent their graveyard or them, the, or them. if you target them or any other permanents you've committed a crime so anytime you do that play a removal play a discard anything that you do is a crime yep. uh you will generate i know she's a five drop but i think we can ramp to her um, especially if we're going to do on Rakdos or Blue, um, yeah, she is going to be really good. Not only that, she has a big ward. You have to pay two and pay two, pay two and two life to get yeah. to her. That's, so that's a lot. That's a lot to kill her. Uh, she has learned a couple of tricks here. She is going to be zombifying. It's going to be wild. Um, zombie rogues for the win right there. Generating tokens. Hey man, again, generate tokens even more. You want even more? Run an Orzov and put a put a Mondrak Lori Dominus in there. Yeah. four of them i mean there's all kind of stuff that you could do with her she's a lot flexible even if you even if you just want sacrifice fodder um mm -hmm. creating that many three three menaces is going to be really good she is a powerhouse um yeah for a five drop which we don't really have that many i'm glad they didn't make her a four drop to be honest we have too many good black four drops yeah, we needed a couple more much. five drops uh and not only that she's a four four she's outside of lightning bolt range you got to play a direct kill on her. You got to do something a little, a little stronger, to, mm -hmm. stronger to get her out. So, I, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to our zombie future. Yeah, and I would also like to point out, going off of you talking about Vile Smasher, is that she is a warlock, yes. which means that she would actually trigger the Vile Smasher. She's on the battlefield when his ping goes off and you target the opponent. That means that she's on the board and you've committed a crime. So you would actually get an instant payoff with Vile Smasher. Um, oh, just, yeah. just by her entering the battlefield. Didn't even think didn't even yeah. think of that. That just yeah. by playing her with Vile Smasher on the board, mm -hmm. you would immediately commit a crime and immediately get the zombies. Next turn, unless they have a wipe, next turn that you're coming you're rolling heavy. You know what I mean? Rakdos Outlaws. There you go, man. Yeah, Rakdos Outlaws. That's oh. a what is that? I, that's a four for one because you pinged mm -hmm. also. Yep. And and then you you pinged again. So three damage, three creatures, uh, for five mana. Mm -hmm. Uh, sorry, a four four, a two and two two twos and three damage for five mana. I think that's good. I think it's pretty good. I think I'm for five. Say... Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty solid, dude. Yeah. That's pretty good. So yeah, I'm very much looking forward to Geese and the Hellraiser. Um, yeah, and and like you were saying, they put uh, they put the zombies in there as rogues. So they're doing a good job, even with the tokens. Exactly of, like, of giving that you know that uh, what's the word like um, viability the, the viability, flavor. but the uh, what is, the continuity giving uh -huh. it that that continuity of you know um, yeah everything is going to line up. We're, we're going to you know give you good ideas for this stuff so they're, they're i don't want to say they're making it easy for us but you know that it's really easy to it's it's uh ideas are really popping into our heads Jay, oh Jay yeah there's some like, there's gonna be some good combos i feel like every every time we talk about cards we like message each other and we're like oh yeah this is like a new combo that that we, we can try you know there's a lot of shit to try and we're gonna we're gonna you know we're gonna have a good time um i think she's gonna see some playing commander oh yeah i think, I think that's why before it's even printed She's a twenty-five dollar card, according to the speculation. <laughs> I think yeah, a lot of people she, want to make her the, the commander. Going to be a big zombie commander. <laughs> yeah, she so. is going. She's she's big on zombies. She's but it's like, yeah, I gotta you know wait till well in commander, you probably get around like turn three. Cedh probably like turn two. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can get her pretty quick, probably. And that's that's gonna be a hell of a time for someone to deal with. If you get her out on turn three, they're not going to be able to deal with her until probably no. turn four. No, probably or not. Or they're not going to be able to play their commander. You know? Yeah. yeah. You're going to, yeah, you're going to like, yeah, you're, you're going to do some stuff if you, uh, if you get her as a commander. I, I, I think that might be worth looking at even making a, maybe like, like a little historic brawl action with, with Gisa might be fun. You know? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. She, yeah. she is, she is definitely, uh, she's going to be, she's, she's going to be swinging a lot. She a hell of a card hurt. and not in just standard mm -hmm. we're gonna call it right now yeah 
overall. Yeah. All right, so what's your? We're getting close here. What's your number four? Oh yeah, no number two. Your number two? Yeah, that's right. That was your number three, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, okay, and someone you probably saw me post about this on Twitter. Um, well, some of you maybe. I don't know. Not I know not everybody uses Twitter, and I, I know I'm not a famous Twitter person. Um, but <laughs> this one here. All right, it is Rakdos joins up, and. Uh, the value on this card is climbing. People are starting to see that it's, yeah, you know, it's going to do something. So it is an enchantment, and it is of course Rakdos colors. And it, I believe, each, uh, not each like guild from Ravnica got one, but like the each each one person of the posse. Each who per, yeah, within said posse, like uh, there's a Vraska, mm-hmm. um, there's Rakdos. I don't know all of the others, but I know Kellen. Kel- yeah, there's a Kellen join. Vraska. Yeah, so there's like at least three, maybe maybe more. Um, but yeah, Rakdos is here. So this is and they're they're all enchantments, notably. I believe they're all legendary enchantments too, because they're all like pretty powerful. Um, so this one is three colorless and then black and red. So they're kind of expensive, but what you get to do is a lot. And Rakdos can ramp. There's already a Rakdos ramp deck, so we're gonna maybe go off of that. Um, so Rakdos joins up. He's like I said, legendary enchantment. He is a rare. Um, this one, when Rakdos joins up, enters the battlefield, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield with two additional plus one plus one counters on it. Okay. Whenever a legendary creature you control dies, Rakdos joins up, deals damage equal to that creature's power to target opponent. So what I was looking at here, which, which, you know, there's kind of a lot going on. There's like two big, two long winded abilities here. Um, we're going to reanimate something and, and give it plus, or, you know, two plus one plus one counters. Um, and then if it dies, if you kill it, when it comes back, you're going to lose life for whatever his power is. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to do something else here. I'm going to kill it for you, but for science and for extra value <laughs> um so you basically long story short and, and you could do it with a lot of things you could reanimate an atali mm-hmm. reanimate an atraxa reanimate yeah. um whatever big dumb creature you want as as long as it's legendary i say it's worth it it literally is almost like insert big dumb creature here big dumb yeah and and profit if you have one more mana you can cast the adventure side of Callus Cell Sword, uh, which is called Burn Together for one red mana. Mm-hmm. If you're playing the Rakdos Ramp, you might have a treasure or two laying around. Um, and then you, if you don't know what that card does, um, it's basically fling, but but the creature stays on the battlefield while the damage is dealt, then you mm-hmm. sacrifice it. So a card like a Traxa would actually allow you to gain the life that you dealt. You would gain nine life from it. Uh-huh. Um, and then you sacrifice it. So that would deal the damage from the burn together. And then Rakdos joins up would deal the damage as well. So an Atraxa or an Atali is 18 damage. If it's or yeah, if it's if it's an Atraxa, it's gain nine. Uh, I gain nine, you lose 18, and I get five cards. Atali is I get two free spells. Um, you know, take your pick from whatever strong creature you want to reanimate and then fling it at your opponent and effectively win the game in one turn. If you do, um, what's that one called? The, the, the whaler of souls or what? Not, not that one. The it's an eight, eight. So you could actually do 20 damage. Oh, um, the, is it that, that two drop? Yeah. It's a two drop. That's an eight, eight. Is it legendary? I th- no, I don't know if it's legendary. I think it might okay. be. There, there are creatures that are bigger than eight that are legendary, though, for sure. Yeah, you know what I mean. They're, like, there's what is that? The the that Galta. Um, oh, uh, yeah, Yargle. The freaking Yargle. <laughs> yeah, Yargle and Multani. Yeah, that's yeah. A legendary so that's one. something. Yargle. I think he's what a nine three or something in the new one. No, that that thing is in eighteen seven. I think. Oh, that's or, the eighteen. Okay, there yeah. you go. And I believe he's legendary. So yeah, that's thirty six damage. Yeah, that's there legendary. Um, that's it. 
Yeah, that's Yargo and Miltani, that's a good one. Um, so yeah, the, you have a lot of options. Uh, the game has given you some pretty strong creatures that you can do this with. And if it's turn five, you very well may have already taken down their life a little bit. So reanimating a 7-7 seven, seven and making it a 9-9 nine, nine and then fling, double flinging it is, by that time in the game is, pro is probably close to enough anyway. Exactly. Unless, unless they're like a life gain deck. which As if we needed more hyper-powered reanimator. Yeah. Yeah, it's not... It's not amazing. Now, I, I think it's reasonable that this card costs five mana, but to make the reanimator an enchantment and then give it a static ability is also pretty ridiculous, in my opinion. And I'm, I'm here for it personally. I know it's going to be super broken, um, but yeah, yeah Rakdos, Re Rakdos ramp slash reanimator with like breach and stuff. I think it's big gonna, boys. Big hits. I think it's going to get pretty fun. And you're going to see some crazy stuff and you're going to see some OTKs and I'm all about it and I'm not mad. So absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I actually made a deck. I did make a deck centered around this already um, for one of the for the article that I wrote last week. Oh, yeah. We'll link to your article the, down there. Yeah. So I, I write I, people didn't know I write articles usually release once a week for MTG Circle. Um, which is they're affiliated with like MTGA codes. They sponsor my team. So, um, yeah. So I, I did, I did make a deck. Uh, it, it's like Rakdos ramp reanimator type deal. And we try to only do legendary creatures with it. So this is what we got and it is really something. And there's some really strong legendary creatures that are here. Um, I, I put, I think I put Junji in there. I put a Tali. Oh, I, I, I put our guy Drivnod. There you go. Because um, maybe you don't kill Drivnod, but um, Drivnod would give the 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 triggered ability on the enchantment. Um, the death trigger twice. Yeah. It would be two of those triggers. Yeah. So that that could be cool. So that would that would allow you to do it with like a freaking five five. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So yeah, so there, there's some cool stuff and uh, be looking out for a, a deck from Jay or myself or both for this card. Oh yeah, it's gonna be there, don't worry. All right, so I am going up next and I am gonna tell you about one. I'm changing it up too. I'm not going with, with black either. Okay. And that is one that I think people are underestimating. Mm -hmm. I, I genuinely think that they're underestimating it and that is going to be Mr. Colossal Rattle Worm. Believe it or don't. That's who I think is going to be the man. Um, this is a green card. And this is a unique green card because, guess what? He is a 6-5, okay? He is a 6-5 trample. He costs 4. Okay, Pretty good. that's where that's where we're at right now, guys. <laughs> we're at the point in magic cards where six five tramples cost four. I remember six six non tramples costing seven with like craw worm and all that. Yeah, I remember um, that was like considered good. That was like yeah, the standard, you know. That was like the good one. Um so yeah pretty exciting stuff on that one but what is even better about him is he has flash as long as you control a desert yes if you get a desert card he has flash he's jumping jack flash um which means that you can immediately for four mana put a six five uh monstrously large creature on the board and uh that's gonna be for your pleasure right there um that's bad. That's ba that, if, if that's not clear, that immediately putting a 6-5 on the board, first of all, to block is amazing. Yeah. Um, but also, do it in your opponent's end step. Yep. What are they going to do? They've played their turn. Okay, uh, I'm gonna. You're, uh, it's you're going to be your end step. Guess what? 6-5. Uh, okay, I, he controls my turn. No summoning sickness. I attack for 6. Uh, Did they trampoline. just print Green Wandering Emperor? <laughs> Basically, he's green. Yeah, I mean, he's he's monstrously big on the on the on the on the reflect right there he is just huge <laughs> so now um, now you have to worry about if they have two white mana and two other mana up you worry you have to worry about wandering emperor and now you'd worry about the same thing but swap the white mana for green mana um and if my if green leaves up four which they usually wouldn't do anyway unless they had no cards in hand mm -hmm. if green leaves up four mana now you got to worry about this guy 
Yeah, um, and not only that, he has a little bit of an extra bonus right here, which naturally is going to be Exile Colossal Rattle Room for your graveyard. Search your library for a desert card, put it into play, and then shuffle uh, for yourself right there. That's Great pretty cool, stuff. too. Love to see it. Yeah. I like that they're bringing back worms. I like that it almost gives like a, because it's Thunder Junction, it's almost like a little like Dune action. A little Dune, way. yeah. It's, yeah, it feels you know a little I mean? bit more, uh, yeah. yeah, a little bit and, more exotic. That kind of goes with what we're saying. Like, it's not like America wild yeah. west it's a weird west which you I know like. it's it's a it's almost like 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 a futuristic one mm -hmm. um which i think is cooler like almost like star wars kind of wild west like you know how they had the their kind of uh venture into like those desert lands and stuff you know mm -hmm. almost something like that and of course like dune you know um but yeah this is good and you and you know you can tutor for a, a desert if nothing else which is great mm -hmm. um because I know we were talking about before, there are deserts. There's a desert that exiles graveyards. Mm -hmm. That that can become relevant. And now I think that's in um, like Explorer and Pioneer and Modern. But still, you can you can literally tutor that. And so this this actually could like turn into into like a nice sideboard card in some decks, um, if not if not main decks. So pretty cool. Um, mo makes mono green better. Makes it more of a threat. Mm -hmm. um, it. It makes it because mono green always felt a little one dimensional, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's giving you a little bit extra tricks. I play with your my big, big creature. dumb creatures. I attack you, and I hope yeah. you die. It's almost yeah. like a it's like a yeah. backdoor haste because yeah, yeah. Save it, play it on your opponent's turn, and all of a sudden it's going in. Yeah. Um. You know. So I actually really like this one. I think that it's going to be. I think we're going to see it become a green staple. Yeah, I, I think it's it's a great choice. Mm -hmm. Also, notably, not a legendary. So. No, put as, many put, as you put, want. As ma put as many as you want in there. Yeah, go nuts. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, very good. Very good card. Um, I look forward to it. Um, maybe mono green will get better, and it, maybe it's it's nice. You know, everything's well-rounded if if mono green's good, too, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, um, I'd love to see them make a good comeback. Yeah, for sure. Okay, well. All right, well, let's get to your number one. We've got number the number one, one man. We're down um, to number one for now. Uh, see, it's so now this this is funny how they have this card named. Um, here he is. Uh, what, what they actually because this card was in Japanese, they initially put the Japanese translation to it. And okay. I didn't said know that. Translate, yeah. Said translation was originally directly translated to Crispy Crab a cool. <laughs> I don't think that's correct. No, I have a no. feeling that they did not get that right. Something, so, something is telling me. Yeah. So the article that I was writing, I had a hard time actually getting the card into the database because where the database pulls from, it, it was trying to pull the crispy crab, crispy but, crab, a cool. But they put quotations around it. So mm -hmm. the quotations were like fucking up the code and mm. it was making it not work. And I was like, listen, I'm just going to put a picture of this shit and copy what the text is. Okay. So what is <laughs> his actual, when he's not crispy crab or cool. What is no. he actually? His actual name is a cool, the unrepentant. The now unrepentant. don't get me wrong. Well, that's both a much names, cooler name. Well, I think both names are cool, but for the purposes and flavor of this card, yes, mm -hmm. the unrepentant is cooler. Um, I wouldn't have, turn down crispy crab a cool though just for the record i would have laughed and taken it maybe a little bit less seriously but i would have accepted it anyway this guy just going off of stats he's a legendary he's a scorpion dragon rogue scorpion your rogue. dragon rogue he's an outlaw he's also a scorpion dragon i think all the dragons yeah. except for terror of the peaks in this one are scorpions, are scorpions. yeah they're scorpion dragons so that that's pretty cool um goes to that mystical kind of thing going on um with this set too but yeah he's two black two red five five flying trample we could just stop there and say it's good but we have some text we have an activated ability from a cool uh sacrifice three other creatures you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield activate only as a sorcery and only once each turn <laughs> awesome awesome yeah so with all the fodder that we're gonna have mercenaries token decks whatever we're gonna have i mean playing free creatures once a turn that's you know yeah 
Um, and then we have like some we have some things where like when a creature dies, you get another creature. We have stuff like that, so that way it it's you know the the mechanic is like replacing itself. It's almost free. Yeah. Um, you know we have planeswalkers like like that Ashiok planeswalker that makes two tokens mm-hmm. right as it comes out. You mm-hmm. know. Um, so that's a thing. You've got that gleeful demolition. If you have something that that makes a a freaking uh, blood token, one mana, you get your three creatures as your fodder mm-hmm. from the blood token that you already got as an ETB that was already a two for one to begin with. Mm-hmm. Um, or you maybe you have a map token because someone removed your creature with get lost. Okay, gleeful demolition. I'm already playing red. Boom. There's three creatures. Boom. Here's an Atraxa. Here's an Atali. Here's a Vein Ripper. Whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. Whatever you and, want. And on top Ooh. of this, he's a 5-5 five, five Flying Trample. Like, yeah. He's a 5-5 yeah. five, five Flying Trample for four. Yep. He'd be good if they ended it right there. That's why I like, said. I said we can stop there. Yeah. It's like already that's, good. That's already just a good card. Like, a dragon for that much is just, you know. He's legendary, so if you kill him... He can trigger the Rakdos joins up. That's a thing. Uh-huh. We have a lot of we have a lot of stuff going on here. Um, so I think we can, you know, I think we can have some fun with this card. Um, yeah, I think he might be good in multiple formats because there's yeah. those like um, that. Uh, uh, and Rakdos has so much dragon support, anyways. Yeah, you know? dragon support, and there's that like Rakdos sacrifice deck. Yeah, in uh, in Pioneer, this could maybe bring that back. Um, Hell, put him. I mean, put him with uh, put him in Rakdos with um, Vein Ripper. All of a sudden, they're losing yeah. that much life. Yeah, you're dude. sacrificing. If the Vein Ripper's already out, yeah, yeah, put, they put lose him down. six life just from you playing a creature for free. Play, <laughs> yeah, and play. Blow do you play for free? Play another Vein Ripper. You know? Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. Put another one out there while you're at it. You know, so <laughs> Rakdos sacrifice Rakdos dragons. You have Rizzo of the Claw, so he could get Rivaz, out for yeah. cheap. Yeah. Rivaz or whatever his name is. Yeah, Rivaz um, makes him like two mana or something, right? Yeah, it gives you two mana to cast uh, dragons. So, so that's pretty good. Um, yeah, there's a there's a lot there's a lot where he could go with. Yeah, and also, um, I think, uh, yeah, with Pioneer, like, there's those Cat Oven decks. So you have it with that. You can sack the, the Cat. if And then if Mayhem Devil's out, that's one damage for each uh, creature that you sacked for it. So that's a nice little payoff there, too. So that I, I think it might light up other decks in different formats that weren't that were kind of falling off in like pioneer mm-hmm. explorer and obviously in standard there's there's going to be a, a, a definitely i think a way to abuse this oh yeah um, for sure so yeah i think it's going to be all kinds of fun i think we're going to have to pay attention to some of the you know big strong creatures that get printed and are a thing so we can um you know so we can kind of get all that going and mm-hmm. figure out like what's the best payoff for a cool you know, you could tox real, whatever. There's all kinds of stuff, dude. You know, um, I haven't fully looked through the set at the, the huge legendary creatures, um, but I'm sure there's something from the new set, you know, that you could that you could put out that I think would also be relevant. Um, so there's definitely a lot, a lot to look at. And there's like we're saying a lot to be to be mindful of and a lot to worry about. Yeah, um, yeah. There's going to be some really cool stuff coming up. I, yeah, it's, it's going to be really great. Yeah, so I'm, a, a cool, I'm, I'm stoked for it. Yeah, a cool is something to watch out for for sure. I don't know. You know, I feel like there aren't uh, a ton of huge, big dumb creatures. And I mean, there's your there's your your worm that six six five. That's kind of easy to get out on the board. Yeah, though. there's some dragons and stuff, you know? but there's there's a couple of things. But yeah, I, I think I it's. I you, think there's Terror of the Peaks. You could do the, the yeah, terror ability of the to Terror of the Peaks. Of course, that'd be a good um, dragon deck, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm just, like, scrolling through them real quick. Oh, there's that Bonnie Paul, that 6-5 that also makes the Ox. But that's, like, Simic colors. That's yeah, kind that's of Yeah, that's Simic colors. It's big. That's a, yeah. Eh, um, whatever. Oh, and then there's Spinewoods Armadillo, a 7-7 seven, seven with Reach and Ward 3. There you go. There you, you know, go. There's, 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 there's a big... Now, that's kind of... That might not be a very crazy standard constructed card. Um, there's Vault Born Tyrant. There's a there's a big dino you can play with it. 
Um, anything else crazy relevant? I'm not quite sure that's going to be standard legal. Like I said, the, the rattle worm. Um, well, we have a plenty of big, I mean, we have so many dinosaurs and believe it or not, there's actually some dinosaur support in this. We still true. have a ton of big boys from, from dino land. Yeah, it's that's a lot. True. So that's true. I'm not too worried about it. I feel like there's supplemental maybe for draft. You won't be able to swing so much, uh, uh, heavy hitters, but I yeah, think I don't know about standard. Uh, yeah, I don't know about a cool being the craziest draft card, um, but yeah, really good constructed. You, it, it just he just like screams like, "Hey, build a deck around me!" And we're, Jay and I are like, "Okay, thank you." <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so it, it, I think it's time for my number one, and then yeah. we're gonna have to go for the big boy. We're gonna yeah, have to man, go, go for ahead the, for the final. Um, all right, so. This is an unusual number one for me, but man, is it? I, here's the thing. I feel like this is going to be a game changer. I feel like a lot of people are going to be running this, and we're going to be seeing this card far into the future because it kind of serves as a replacement for some of the cards that are going away in re, in, uh, um, uh, in rotation. Sure. Uh, and that is one from the big score uh, thing, and that is called Collector's Cage. Okay, this is from the big score, meaning it's standard legal, but it is an artifact. You guys know what fight rigging is? You guys know what fight rigging is, right? Oh, they know about fight rigging. They know about fight rigging. Fight rigging was good in Golgari. It was good in, in, in green. It was good in anything green. This is basically that, except a little cheaper, and also it pumps things up. It, it, it's basically just a new fight rigging. It's called Collector's Cage. It looks like a giant crazy tumbleweed. It is one white and one. It's an artifact that has hideaway five, meaning you exile the top five cards of your library. Um, you exile the top five cards of your library. And then what you do after that is you, uh, uh, you, get you choose two. one of them. Yeah. And then if you meet the requirements of the card, you could get to cast it for free. The requirements of this card, which also are available on the card, is you pay one. You could put a 1-1 counter on target creature you control. So it just gives you 1-1 counters for free. Um, then, if you control three or more creatures with different powers, which is kind of like the Coven ability from Vow. I don't know why they put Coven in there. But basically, if you have a power 1, 2, and 3, or a power 5, 6, and 7, or whatever powers you have, three different powers, you get to play the creature without paying its cast cost. I mean... There's a well, reason that I think in standard that, uh, yeah, yeah. that that card, um, what's it called? Um, fight rigging is so uh -huh. brutal. Like it, it is probably one of the strongest cards out there. The fact that white is getting this and that it's an artifact on top of everything else, yeah. um, should pretty much tell you everything you need to know about what is going to happen here. I think it is going to be extremely used a lot. Like mm -hmm. people are going to be playing this like crazy. Um, uh, yeah, it's it, 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 I know it's not green. It's white now, which is crazy that they took it away from green and added that. But also you could talk about uh, Selesnia, com uh, uh, combine it with the Ozolith. So some things get plus two, plus two or yeah, something sure. like that. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, it, it, it's wild. It's anything, anytime that says you can pay something without its mana cost by beating one of these relatively basic kind of, you know, meeting this kind of, uh, very basic, uh, uh, criteria that they have um you know it's a good card i i, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of that that's my prediction i think it is going to be a main thing because you can get a track so you can do all kind of stuff there's just a lot you can do with these hideaway cards yeah i think something that's relevant with this too is that ability doesn't say activate only as a sorcery no you can play it whenever as long as you control them yeah so that's really something you could like if you, if you know it's it's removal you could pay the one and you know tap it and then cast your kill spell cast your mm -hmm. counter spell whatever mm -hmm. you know um or you could play the creature yeah exactly exactly so um you could play yeah. it like in response to a, to attacks i kind of feel like i see someone using it to play wandering emperor but uh, well, I mean, I think it has to be you pay it without its mana cost. I think it has to be legal for you to pay it, play it at that time. Does it? Yeah, because it says you may play the exiled card without playing its mana cost. If it's a sorcery, I don't think you can pay it. 
Well, it says you can play it, but not cast it. But also, mm, I'll also, um, what do you call it? Is uh, fight rigging is pre combat, but you can still play creatures in pre combat, but it's technically not the main phase. Mm -hmm. So, and it still lets you. So, I think this card will let you do that at any time. Yeah, which is yeah. which is ridiculous. But even so, Wandering Emperor has Flash. Exactly. But so she's going I, away. I guess it doesn't matter either way. But yeah. Um, but yeah, so this uh, you, you could pull off some shenanigans with it. It's, this is arguably better than this is like kind of like we say, like power creep. This is arguably power creep fight rigging because this gives you more control over when the card comes out. Oh, yeah. And by, by the way, guys, this is not an, this is not legendary. You can have yeah. four of these out on the board. Yeah, dude. Kind of <laughs> Even if you just want to use it to put counters on stuff. Mm hmm. You know, not not a, if you're if you just like need to put your mana into something. OK, here you go. Um, so that's that's a thing right off the bat. And I, yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely something. It's pretty legit. Um, and uh, Hideaway 5 is good. It's two mana. It's already cheaper than fight rigging. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. And there's there's plenty of creatures for you to put out. Oh, yeah. By turn get your 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 coven yeah. ability here exactly there, there's a lot to do to do that one uh Selesnya counter has always been strong mm -hmm. um it, it'll definitely be available to to do things you know yeah i'm interested to see what kind of payoffs people get with that because yeah um, i i just see it having a lot of legs in meta for a while it's going to be mm -hmm. around for three years uh <laughs> yeah yeah it's true. i think that i think that it's going to be i think it's going to be used for a while so yeah, no, I totally agree. And the the one white in the casting cost makes it very, very portable to many archetypes. You know. Well, that's my number one. Um, awesome. I, it holds infinite opportunities. Um, I'm definitely going to use that. I want to probably do it with like Orzov or something. But okay, yeah, yeah. It wouldn't have been my number one because we all know what the number zero is. What what we both. <laughs> I mean, I think we're, what was, it was that night uh, we were like texting each other, like immediately we were like, when it re premiered, we were like, ah! um, Jay was like, well, let's wait to see all the cards. I was like, no, it's no, we one. don't need to see these cards. <laughs> I don't need uh, to see any more cards. It's number yeah. one. Do we want to do, best. do you have any honorable mentions? I think yeah, we mentioned yeah. a couple of them. Terror of the peaks yeah. is a reprint, but he's uh, pretty strong for, um, yeah and then the uh insatiable avarice yeah that's a good one that's yeah. a really good one i th that was on that that short list that i sent you uh let me just check out that list and see if there's anything else from it that we haven't mentioned um form a posse which i think we talked about that with your mm -hmm. um vile smasher yeah um i don't think we talked about calamity galloping inferno no um i like that one a lot i my biggest issue well, let me go back. Let me say my biggest issue with Terror of the Peaks, they did not give him a cowboy hat. I, <laughs> I think that is, I, I think that's just, yeah, it's just. <laughs> they could have like redone the art. I feel like that could have been cool. They, they, they did, or they did do a new art. They did do great um, new art, but in the artwork, he doesn't have a cowboy hat. <laughs> I, somebody was talking about, they wanted to build a program that just uh, put like a uh, taped cowboy hat on everything. <laughs> just no matter what creature it was, an yeah, animal, a creature. Cowboy hat. It just had like a taped cowboy hat on it, uh, <laughs> no matter what. So, um, so that's my biggest issue with it. Terror of the Peaks, Fair form enough. a posse. Um, the new Karavik is good. That's yeah. a good one. Karavik, yep. Uh, and then yeah, Calamity, the Galloping Inferno. It like, mm -hmm. uh, it that's that's like a like some like it has a, like a fireball ability when when saddling with like uh, creatures that enter the battlefield, making copies and stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, uh, Jay didn't like it as much, but ruthless law or it was a L ruthless law bringer. Yeah, that was a good one. I thought Jay didn't love it, but we were. I was just saying how many tokens like you just sacrifice like a little one one token when it hits the battlefield, and you destroy any non land permanent, and it's a three mana creature. It's pretty good value in my opinion because it's a removal card and a creature in one. Um, and then what else? Oh, great train heist. It's yeah, probably it's gonna be one, the yeah. best red spree card. Yeah. In my Speaking opinion. of spree, I guess we have to mention that white is getting a instant board wipe. That sucks. Instant speed board wipe. Yeah, we probably should mention that. And we're not. What's that one called? It. That's a spree card. It's called the uh, high noon or some shit. I, I, that sounds about shoot right. Him, yeah. Shoot him down. I can't remember. I yeah. was so mad at it that I immediately. I, I, I 
I tried to my phone on the ground as soon as I saw it. So <laughs> yeah, that's what they like... said. They said, you know what? You know what white really needs right now? I know we have board wipes and exiles. What if they had one that was instant speed that could just immediately do it? Um, Six mana. Yeah. But worth it, in my opinion. Speaking like, of spree, though. Oh, hang on. I got one more. Sorry. Pitiless oh. Carnage. Pitiless Carnage. Oh, yeah. I saw that one. I actually like that one. Yeah. Sacrifice a bunch of permanents. Draw that many cards. Beautiful. Love it. Let's yeah. do it. Always love to always love to draw cards off of sacrifice. Sacrifice like all your I don't know if you can sacrifice lands or not, but like sacrifice everything and Yeah, then, it's any permanence. Yeah, sacrifice all your permanence and just have shouldered on the board, sacrifice everything but shouldered. <laughs> draw all the cards. Yeah. <laughs> uh just just random stuff. But yes, speaking of spree. Speaking of time, spree, it's, it's time, time to talk tier. about the S one. Let's talk about S tier, triple S tier, S plus God mode god mode ultra card what what i generously call perhaps per too generously maybe there's an argument to be made there but the new invoke so to speak Aha. um i will give uh numbskull the honors oh thanks man here we go this card is rush of dread rush of dread one mana colorless two uh black mana it's a sorcery it's a rare. Um, this is, like we said, new invoke. And what this card is doing is you're going to cast it for the three mana, and then you can. it has three spree effects that are all strong. Um, the first one here is for plus one. Target opponent sacrifice half the creatures they control rounded up. It's like a four mana pseudo board wipe. Obviously, with the Vein Ripper out, this is really good depending um if the opponent doesn't have any creatures out that's fine just don't choose that one uh yeah. maybe they're hoarding cards in their hand okay cool uh for plus two target opponent discards half the cards in their hand rounded up there you go if they're holding a full hand over there azoria's control now they have three cards because you're rounding up so they discard four um if that's not good if they're hellbent and they have no creatures even better plus two target opponent loses half their life total rounded up how can we make that any more awesome? Jeez, well, how could, what could we do to make that even better? Could we double it, Jay? Could we double it and send it to the next guy? Yeah. <laughs> send it to the next guy, yeah. <laughs> That's what Spree says. Spree said, double it and send it to the next guy. With uh, with Blood Letter of Aquazots, if you choose the last mode, and you, can, you only have to choose that one if you want. For five yeah, mana. No matter how much life they have, because you're rounding up, they will die. They will instantly die. With they could have a million and one life and they will die because it's going to go to half round it up and then it'll, it's going to get half again. Then they'll, they'll lose 500, 500,000 one life and then blood letter will make it uh, 500,000 more. Yeah. 500,000. <laughs> they're going to, they're going to end up at zero and immediately die. So there it is. As it does everything that black is supposed to do. Discard, kill creatures, lows life in any myriad of combination of ways and you can combine this you, this is this is a buffet of black right here yeah i want to sacrifice story. and lose okay sure no problem i'll pay uh i'll pay six to do that half your creatures half your life are gone i want half your cards and half your life i want half your uh whatever you want to do or i want to do it all for eight yeah who cares man you know the, the flexibility of just wrecking your opponent's everything. Like I said, that's why I call it the new Invoke. Invoke was five, and they had to sacrifice, and you drew a card, and you did this. But like this, lose half your cards, lose half your life. That's basically Invoke by another game. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's true. It, it, it's, 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 it's very powerful. And like we said, you could potentially get this out turn five, Turn four play your uh, mono black. Turn four play your whatchamacallit if they don't play uh, your, your blood letter. Your blood letter. Yeah. If they don't remove it, turn five is dead. They just die. Doesn't matter. Yep. They're dead. That's it. Um, if you want to run, if you want to run something like um, Golgari and you want to move faster, you want to put some mana rocks on the board or generate some treasure or something could like be, that. Could be like like a nice turn four win. Probably could be a nice turn four win for you yeah. right there. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> which, I mean, come on, come on, man. And again, sacrifice. I'm talking about Boros Convoke when you have something like uh, Bloodletter, uh, not Bloodletter, but uh, um, 
what's that guy's name out? Uh, Vein Ripper. The Vein Ripper out. Half, yeah. half the creatures get sacrificed. It's yeah. it's pretty bad. It's it yeah. is a very very tough card to beat, man. It is powerful. The hell of a top deck. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you know. Um, so yeah, and but it was kind of like if you top decked Invoke, you could get back in the game, and this is a similar. This is this is one of those. Thing. Oh, I got I got there artillery. This is a closer. That's what it is. Yeah, it's a closer. This finishes games. Yeah, this immediately is going to shift balance of a game so hard. Mm -hmm. Get rid of half of all your stuff. You know, get rid of half of two things on turn five, turn six. Come on, man. We're, we're really balancing out. Things, it's really so. something, isn't it? Yeah, it, we're really very excited something. about it. Um. Equally, I'd like to say you can also uh, cast it for free with uh, Beseech the Mirror, but you, it does not give you, it does not pay the additional cost for it. doesn't you. pay the additional cost, yeah. So you do have to still pay the whatever, but you're, you're effectively saying that if you bargain Beseech, that you basically get to pay one mana extra to tutor this card and cast exactly. it. Like in in the same breath, in the with with that one card. Uh -huh. So I think this makes um, beseech the mirrors value go up too once this hits. I'm gonna call it buy your beseech the mirrors now if you're gonna play this in paper. Oh, because yeah. I bet you beseech the mirrors value goes up. People are already asking about it. Oh, how does it work with beseech? How does it work with beseech? Buy that card before this card comes out. Exactly. I'm telling you right now exactly just so saying. you could just do three you could do three more mana on top of the beseech to do half life half creatures or something like that you know sure yeah 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 so. or you know like we were saying about the the, the blood letter if you have like that extra mana maybe it's turn six now or whatever and you sack like a blood token a map mm -hmm. token um any enchantment okay go find your rush of dread with the beseech blood letters out you know they discard shit or they um lose half their life whatever you know there it is mm -hmm. um and you know maybe and if, if it's the lose half their life you can tutor it and make them and kill them for six mana effectively and and uh one bargain token if you will yeah bargaining yeah. chip bargaining chip say. one bargaining chip six mana blood letter on the board tutor it kill your opponent with one card mm -hmm. there you go good stuff so at, to us we feel like we have this the card that can literally end games with a combo that only requires one other card it feels like we have to include it yeah absolutely absolutely so that's your card zero that's your card zero if you picked it we'll do something for you <laughs> <laughs> we we hope you liked it um and we hope you like our top 10 we want to know your top 10 Let oh yeah, yeah 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 tell us your top 10 and jay wasn't uh vein ripper our card zero as well last time? it was we were very uh, proud of our card this card zero ripper because it won the championship i would i would venture to guess that we will once again be proud i'm not going to say that it's that i'm like guaranteeing it's the best card in the set mm -hmm. uh as it is now uh preemptively i i say that i think it is but it, uh, we, we could stand corrected on that for sure oh yeah well we are good at picking black cards that we are one thing we know how to do black card we we <laughs> know how to pick a good black card mm -hmm. um yeah so that's it guys that's all we got we hope you liked it give us your top however many you have yeah um, let us know what you think tell us what you're excited for if you think uh if, you know, if you let us know if you have any uh, Gisa commander deck ideas. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think that's going to be fun. I think that's going to be a fun commander card. Join the council and start brewing with us. Yeah, man. Yeah, we can we can brainstorm ideas, bounce ideas off one another. We can help you with decks, whatever it may be. So definitely worth checking out. Uh, but we, we really appreciate you guys watching. Patrons, get ready for some decks. If you're not subscribed, this is the time, or sorry, if you're not a, a patron, or if you're not time. subscribed, you got to subscribe to the channel too. Well, to the yeah, don't yeah, you got to subscribe to Jay's YouTube channel. That's like that's like a given. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But if you're not a patron, this is a great time to do it because um, you're going to get access to some decks that not other people that you know nobody else is going to see. Um, pretty much like right up until the set comes out. So definitely worth it. We recommend it. I think it's a good idea. Worst thing that happens is you lose a dollar. 
<laughs> yeah. Give we have a dollar tier that you can do a to- you can do a dollar <laughs> tier. We have cheap cheap ways to join the council. We'd love to have you there. Yeah. So check it out. So and post release, we're gonna be of course we're gonna be doing our our cooperative build. I think oh, we're probably yeah. gonna do a Rakdos. I think that Yeah, I think we'll we'll have to do a Rakdos. Um mm-hmm. and then I, I, yeah. We'll have to see. I, I feel like Jay and I are just each gonna make our own rush of dread deck and just be playing it on stream we're gonna be of like yeah. too excited to actually wait to do it for like the podcast only so for the podcast we'll probably end up doing rakdos yeah oh, sounds yeah. about right but yeah well i'm gonna call this meeting of the council to close uh i've been jay villain you've been great our pa- our patreon is right there our twitch channels numbskull and jay villain um this is like the sixth one of these top 10 we make thank you for helping us get this far oh yeah absolutely. um and uh yeah we're excited for it guys thank you so much and uh we'll call this meeting to a close until next time guys take care guys bye-bye